Good evening. We're just going to wait a few moments now while we wait for, for everybody to join the webinar tonight. So. OK, so uh, I want to start the webinar um, with a very big warm welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, tonight's webinar is part of a series that is hosted by the Energy Environment Institute on our postgraduate programs uh, and that are on offer uh, through the Energy Environment Institute. Tonight, I have the uh, delight of um, hosting tonight's event on the Aura CDT in offshore wind energy and the environment. And I'm joined by a number of colleagues here that will, will also um, explain in some detail what the program is all about. So first of all, thank you very much for joining us this evening um, and um, a warm welcome to you all. My name is Danielle Smith and I'm the Aura CDT Program Manager. Um, and as I said, I'm, I'm joined by a number of colleagues um, that will we'll run through the program in more detail tonight. But before we launch into the, the main body of the uh, webinar tonight, I'd like to um, ask the director for the program to, to say a few words of welcome, please. Dan Parsons. Thanks, Danielle. Um, and, and, and yeah, just to extend my welcome to everybody as well. Um, I hope uh, you'll, you'll enjoy the webinar this evening and, and get some some idea and flavour of the of the centre, um, what what the doctoral training program in, in involves, um, and the different components and how it all fits together. And um, the, the, yeah, for after the after the presentation pieces, there's the question and answer uh, portion as well, where 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 we'll take take and do our best to answer as, uh, the questions that you you pose for us um, as as a broader panel. Um, I, I'm here just to just really to welcome you all, um, tell you a little bit about a, the Institute more broadly um, before then Danielle and the team take over and, and give you all of the details of the, of the, the programme itself. Um, the, the Energy and Environment Institute at Hull was, was founded uh, just over three years ago and we created the Institute to really bring together um, the research and, and the innovation and knowledge exchange associated with um, big challenge areas, big global challenge areas um, associated with sustainable energy, um, uh, addressing uh, the challenges of climate change and, and, and looking to broader um, environmental um, and environments as uh, resilience and, and sustainability. Um, and of course, the Energy and Environment Institute is fused on, on the interface between those, the, the, those two very things in that you can't decouple um, our production of energy um, and our, our consumption of energy from an impact on, on the environment. Um, and the CDT, of course, sits exactly on, at that interface too. Um, we have um, the biggest offshore wind farms in the world being deployed um, just off the, the Humber estuary. So we're right at the heart of this, this global expansion in offshore wind. Um, but, and, and that's in response to, to, to the broader um, climate crisis as well. So, so the the uh, the CDT program um, sits in 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 the mix of, of all of that too. Um, the institute is is now, um, as I said, three years old. We have a, a dedicated building on campus um, that's a, a, a big uh, re refurbishment job actually of a of a, of a previous building. I'm really proud that that refurbishment of a. Uh, uh, of our building received the SCAR Gold rating for sustainability. It was the first building in Yorkshire to receive such a high accolade of sustainability. Um, so, so really much practicing what we preach in terms of um, in terms of that, that addressing uh, addressing global climate change. Um, the the institute itself now um, has over 120 members. Um, so so again, um, uh, have grown very rapidly um, with with a whole range of research that you'll be exposed to on the program that you'll hear about today. And and of course, what we've also been able to do is really drive partnerships. And and the CDT is very much about um, at the heart of those partnerships, both with Aura, which is uh, our innovation centre that's based at the the Humber Bridgehead um, up up, um, up the other side of Hessel, which is really a nucleation point for interfacing. With, with the in with industry and business um, and also our, our partnerships with the other universities involved in the CDT including Sheffield and Durham and Newcastle who, who you'll and you'll hear from colleagues from those institutions this evening on the webinar too 
So, so with that, I will I'll hand back to, to Danielle. I, I hope you get what you need from, from the, um, the webinar. And as I say, if, if there are things that are outstanding at the end that you'd like to get in touch with us about, I'm sure I'm sure that the team or myself will be able to, to, to address those with you as we move forward. So, so thanks again. And, and uh, yeah, I hope you, hope you enjoy the show. So Danielle. Thanks, Dan. Can we see the next slide, Maria, please? So um, thank you very much for that introduction, Dan. That, that really puts the CDT into some context. I'd now like to introduce the team of people on the panel that are going to um, be talking tonight. Um, so I'm going to ask all the presenters to put their cameras on, please. Um, so you know who I am. I'm the CDT program manager. Um, you've just heard from Dan, who's our director. Uh, could I ask Dr. Will Coombs to introduce himself, please? Sure, so Will Coombs, I'm an Associate Professor in the Department of Engineering at Durham University, so one of the partner institutions. And my research interests related to Aura are very much in the realm of numerical modeling of offshore geotechnical problems. So things like foundation solutions, cable installation methods, anchor penetration, etc. And within the Aura CDT, I lead on the process by which if you come and join us, you'll be selecting your particular PhD topic, which you'll then go on to once you've done the first part of the programme at home. Thanks, Will. Um, Dr. Nikos, can I ask you to introduce yourself, please? Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Nikos Dervilis, and I'm an Associate Professor in the University of Sheffield and the Dynamics Research Group. And um, Research-wise, I think I'm I'm doing everything, but it's mainly <laughs> dynamics and uh, data analysis and uh, machine learning and zombies. I love zombies dynamics. <laughs> oh dear. Um, hopefully not too many of those around campus. Uh, Jim, could I invite you to uh, introduce yourself, please? Yeah, certainly can. Hi everyone. I'm Professor Jim Gilbert. Uh, based in the Department of Engineering at the University of Hull. My research interests are around uh, sensors and instrumentation, particularly applied to offshore wind systems. Within the CDT, I coordinate the interaction with industry, um, making sure that what we do is, is relevant to the, the sector. And I also supervise a couple of the, uh, the industry-based PhDs currently underway. Thanks. Uh, Jordan? Could you say a few words about yourself, please? Yeah, sure. So I'm Jordan. Um, I'm my I'm in my first year on the Aura CDT PhD bit, um, and I'm at University of Hull. And my interest is marine biology. And Sophie. Yeah. Hi. My name is Sophie, and um, I am also an Aura PhD student in my first year, and I also have a background in marine biology. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, so thank you very much. Now we know who we're going to hear from this evening. Um, I would like to just point out at this moment, uh, if you have any questions that you're thinking about during the webinar, please pop them in the chat and we will pick them up um, at the end of the session uh, in the Q&A part of the, the webinar. So I'm just going to give a quick brief introduction to what the webinar is about and what you're going to hear about um, in the next sort of half an hour or so. I have the next slide, please. So one thing we want to pick up, first of all, is why is offshore wind energy important? So we're going to run through why it's important and where the CDT fits in with that sector and what, what we're doing. We're also going to run through what we teach and how we teach within the programme. We'll um, then hear from some of our colleagues about the research that we do and, and how do we decide what research we're going to do. And then we'll hear from um, some of our own students about what it's like to be a CDT student. And then finishing off with the um, panel discussion at the end, where I'll pick up some of the questions that you've fed into the chat and we can answer them as best we can. Next slide, please. So before we get into the, the nuts and bolts of everything, I'd like to take just a couple of moments to watch uh, for you to watch a video that puts this into uh, what we're doing into context and explains uh, to some degree why it is that um, our research into offshore energy is so important.
I'm Daniel Parsons. I'm, I'm a professor uh, up at the university and I'm the director of the, the Energy and Environment Institute um, at the university, which seeks to be, bring together multiple disciplines into one um, collaborative uh, arena where we can really seek solutions that we um, in Hull and the Humber really can drive and lead on internationally as, as we move forward into a, what, what's been called a zero carbon world. The Humber is really much at the forefront uh, on the front line of climate change in, in, an, in a whole host of ways. And, and when we look at the capacity of wind energy globally, it's exponential. The, the speed of growth is unbelievable. And that's because the costs have been driven down so quickly. Wind could supply enough energy to sustain the whole of humanity 40 times over. The university and, and all of the partnerships with Greenport Growth and, and now the Aura uh, Collaborative Cluster um, really coming together, shaping the future of this massive industry, the offshore wind sector. And we're embedded as a region within the UK government's uh, sector deal for offshore wind. Um, we're leading nationally and internationally on this. People are looking at us at what we're doing in terms of uh, capitalising on the opportunity of offshore wind. The renewable revolution that's happening right here can help address all of these challenges associated with the climate crisis. So at this point, um, I would like to hand over to uh, Jim Gilbert to say a few words. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd just like to really give a quick overview of the, uh, the structure of the CDT, how a CDT works and, and why uh, doing a PhD through a CDT is different from maybe other ways of doing a PhD. And then I'll pass over to some colleagues who will talk in more detail about some of the key aspects of it. So. Most people are familiar with what a conventional PhD looks like. It's a three year programme. The difference with a CDT is that it's a combination of training and research uh, that really prepares CDT students for uh, a, a real big contribution either to industry or to, to academia. So the first year of a CDT is, uh, is all around training and developing skills and knowledge of the, the, the chosen area, in our case, offshore wind energy. And then that forms a really firm foundation for the subsequent uh, three-year PhD programme. That's really important for the Aura CDT because offshore wind by its nature is very multidisciplinary. It involves engineering, it involves environment, it involves uh, economics, it involves human factors. And so to get an understanding of how all of those different aspects interact with each other, the uh, postgraduate diploma stage, the first year, gives a really good basis for that understanding. And that means that when you go on to your PhD, you can uh, really hit the ground running uh, and, and make really rapid progress. The other thing about a CDT is because you're working with a cohort of other students, you really build up a very good network of people. So uh, other people who are working in the same broad area of research. So if you come across an area where you're not so familiar with, you know who to turn to, who, who might be researching in a, in a different aspect, uh, but have a, a a broadly similar knowledge and can help you out with those aspects. So in terms of the, the structure of the, the CDT, as I say, it's a, the first year of the programme is taught in Hull, uh, and during that first year, you then identify what your PhD topic will be. And, and uh, in, once the second year starts, you transfer to one of the other uh, universities or stay in Hull to continue that PhD research. And then you come back to Hull from time to time for further uh, development and skills and, and networking, because networking is, is an important part of the whole process. Um, over the five years of the, uh, the CDT programme, we have uh, about 75 PhD programmes. Um, 
over five cohorts, and, and we're, we're currently recruiting for the, the third of those cohorts. One of the key things, again, about the, the, the OECDT is we're fo very much focused on, on what the challenges facing the industry are. The, the offshore wind industry has developed incredibly quickly uh, in the UK and, and now is expanding across the world. And so in developing the programme, we spent a lot of time working with industry to identify what their challenges were, uh, to make sure that what we're doing is relevant so that whether you're, you continue on a research path, you can have impact on, on the real world through that. Or if you decide to move into industry, you've got the right footing to, to make a real contribution there. On top of the, uh, the core scholarships, we have industry partners who are sponsoring some of our PhDs where there's a much closer working relationship uh, with, the, with the company. And then we also have opportunities for students to do placements for shorter periods within industry. So just moving on to the next slide, if we could please. So just to, to give a, a little bit of background to the, the postgraduate diploma. So this again was developed with industry to identify the, the skills and knowledge that, that students would need in this sector. Um, it's taught at the University of Hull, but we have contributions from, from the other partner universities. Uh, so you start to get to know people from the three, the four universities that, that are involved. And so it makes that transition into a PhD uh, much more straightforward. The reason it's it's based in Hull is, as, as Dan said, Hull is in the, the energy estuary, the real heart of the, the offshore wind sector. So within a stone's throw of the, the campus, uh, we've got the, the Siemens Gamesa Blade Factory, we've got the Orsted uh, East Coast Operations and Maintenance Hub, and lots of other activity around uh, the offshore wind industry within the, the Humber region. And so that opens up lots of opportunities uh, to, to really link to industry there. Okay, so moving on to the next slide, please. So again, this is all just uh, a short video to give you a little bit more uh, in-depth information about how the CDT operates. The Aura Centre for Doctoral Training is your opportunity to make a difference. To tackle the challenges facing the offshore wind industry, to choose your own research path and kickstart your career, and to help create a sustainable, greener future for us all. The Aura CDT offers fully funded PhD scholarships to 75 students over five years. Starting in September of each year, new students join the cohort whose strengths come from the diversity of academic and working backgrounds, coming together to create a supportive learning environment. The Aura CDT draws on the expertise of leading academics from our four partner institutions. The centre is led by the University of Hull's Energy and Environment Institute, located in the Humber region at the heart of the UK's energy estuary. The Aura CDT works across six research themes with a unique dual focus on the engineering and environmental challenges. The broad range of research themes means we can offer funded scholarships to people from diverse academic backgrounds. We actively welcome applicants from all STEM subjects. We already have students researching in areas as diverse as wind and wave analyses to motion sickness in our offshore wind operatives. At the Aura CDT, we have made a commitment to train our students to be the future leaders in offshore wind energy and the environment. As an Aura CDT student, you will take a training year along with your cohort where you will develop skills that extend across the boundaries of engineering and environmental sciences. Knowledge at the cutting edge of engineering technology and understanding of the life cycle of an offshore wind energy development from conception right through to decommissioning. Tapping into the expertise of our partners, the training year is delivered by both our academic and industry colleagues. Following the completion of the postgraduate diploma, you will move on to a three-year PhD research project. The learning journey continues throughout the full four-year program. At the Aura CDT, we value the student voice and strive to create a supportive environment. 
we are committed to creating a sustainable future for the global offshore wind industry. Join us and make a difference for yourself and the planet. Okay, so we've heard about how the uh, CDT fits in with the sector. We've heard about where it's positioned. I'm just going to run through now um, some further detail around the PG dip that forms the first year of, of, the, of the training program. So as Jim's already mentioned, doing a PhD in, the CD, in a CDT is quite different to one doing in a standard program of PhD. You spend that first year engaged in a, a training program and we use this program to get uh, this first year to get the students up to speed on both the sector relevant issues and also to give them um, fundamental skills that we think, uh, technical skills that we think are important for being able to have a successful career in this industry. But what we also do is um, give the students time and experience on how, uh, gaining some soft skills that we also think are important to take into their careers. And this is around um, communication and teamwork. So over the, the next three years after you finish the PG DIP program, we continue to work on the foundations that are laid within that first year around team working and communication. And these um, continue throughout the PhD part of the program. Um, but we align those training events throughout the, the PhD part of the program to where you are in your research activities so that it's, it's aligned with what you need at that stage. So the CDT itself is founded in principles of teamwork, uh, peer learning, equality and inclusion. And this is reflected in all of the practices of the CDT. Uh, this includes the people that we recruit onto the programme. So at the CDT, um, we welcome a range of people with a range of disciplines and backgrounds from, from engineers, mathematicians to marine biologists. And we encourage them to come from all parts of the globe. The way that the program is designed is to use that diversity. Can I just go back a slide, please? Oh. Um, is to um, the way the program is designed is to use that diversity um, for the benefit of the students, and that's to support uh, team learning skills and um, and it also gives us capacity within the CDT to address a range of research questions that are relevant to the sector. So it it, it allows us to respond to um, sector challenges um, that may evolve over the years of the CDT. So it gives us quite a lot of flexibility, which is very much the benefit to the students as well. Um, a large proportion of the, the PG DIP is, is group work based. So the diversity within the cohorts allows the students to explore and understand how to work with a broad range of people from a broad range of backgrounds. Um, the group work activities also allows uh, students to um, develop skills in peer-to-peer -peer learning, which is a skill that you can take on and use throughout your career, which um, is fundamental to, to having a successful academic career and certainly to being productive in industry as well. So our research programs uh, and projects are very much interdisciplinary, which um, we've touched on already. Um, so what this means is that as students, as part of this particular CDT is that you um, are able to gain expertise um, from a, a diverse range of expertise that is um, from both the academics and the students that are working on them. So when you come to moving on to your PhD project, not only will you have expertise from, from your academics, but also the peer students that you've been working with and have developed the relationships with at the early stages of the programme. We have the next slide now, please. So, the PG DIP program itself, um, as a full-time student, um, it's six modules that is delivered in trimester one and trimester two. Um, it, the program starts in September, as, as Jim mentioned. So that means that the next cohort, cohort three, will be starting in September coming, so it's September 2021. And you can see here from trimester one and trimester two that there's quite a broad range of topics that are covered um, from um, technical skills and from sector knowledge that, that um, is relevant at the time. 
Um, now, while some of these technical skills may not be immediately relevant in your research projects, what it does mean is it gives you skills um, and some knowledge on how you can communicate and work effectively within teams that, that are using these skills. So that's something that you can take um, beyond your PhD and, and into your career later as you move out of the program. Um, that's that one. So you will also have, aside from the formal training aspects of the program, that, that's the taught program that you see here in front of you, students will also participate in um, uh, residentials, um, site visits, you'll work with our industry partners, but uh, during this time you'll also be working with the academics to develop your research project for you to move on to after the summer in September. Um, after you finish the PG dip at the end of trimester two, you will then pick up uh, a couple of more modules that you'll spend the summer then developing your literature review. And you'll also be gaining some skills and around how to communicate your research. And that's um, to a broad range of audiences. So that could be to the public, it could be to our industry colleagues, and it also could be to your, your academic colleagues. So it's, it's a, um, a time to prepare the students ready to start their PhDs with, with all the skills that they need. So come September when you're ready to move on to your project, you've got all the skills behind you to, to hit the ground running. And I think that's about all I need to say about the program at this point. So I think we can move to the next slide, please. Nikos. Hello. Thanks, Daniel. So, um, as you all uh, know by now, uh, you will need to do uh, a PhD uh, research. And um, the PhD uh, research uh, spans between uh, the four uh, institutions. Could I have the next slide, please? Lovely. So, uh, the four institutions are uh, University of Hull, Newcastle University, Durham University, and University of Sheffield. And all of these four uh, institutions are currently uh, some of the leading institutions in terms of uh, offshore wind energy uh, research. And these institutions work together, uh, but what you don't see in the background, they work together with industry. They work together with uh, our partners like Siemens Gamesa or Orsted or the Catapult Center, and a lot of different other um, uh, industry partners, leading partners in offshore wind. So we can create uh, the themes and we can create uh, the research uh, general topics that they're moving forward uh, offshore wind um, uh, 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 research. So could I have the next slide, please? So what is unique about the Aura CDT and what is amazing about uh, the Aura CDT is the plethora of uh, topics. Uh, and this plethora of topics, as you can see, comes from engineering and physics and maths and data science and machine learning, how we handle these heavily censored uh, structures now and span across to environmental uh, sciences, marine biology, how offshore wind can affect uh, uh, this, this kind of, uh, uh, of, uh, of research, how offshore wind can affect uh, biology and uh, aquaculture. But also we will look into new generation materials. You know, wind turbine blades, for example, they're hybrid composite materials, new materials from towers, how uh, we, we check the integrity, how we check uh, the suitability of these materials for the next generation uh, of wind turbines. And we will look into operation and maintenance. These structures, are the farms are operating in deep waters. Soon they will operate in deeper waters with floating offshore wind. How we check the maintenance, how we tune the maintenance, and we will check even the electrical part of these offshore structures. The grid, how we connect if they're going deeper with the grid, how we optimize the grid, how we optimize the energy, for example, going from Scotland to the south uh, of England. And as I said, we will look also to big data and uh, data analysis. 
you know the buzzword of digital twins, for example. You all have seen the first Iron Man movie where you design everything virtually. You need this is a new generation stuff. It is a buzzword, but at the core of it, there are models. And we need to look into these models, how they fit together in this new era uh, of offshore wind. So uh, long story short, the Aura CDT spans across a lot of sectors, sectors, covers the broad research of offshore wind and what is needed to move forward. And it has all the four universities and their industrial partners have projects and invest in all the different topics so you can choose further. So I think that's the end for me. And thanks a lot. Will, the floor is yours. Thanks, Nikos, as always, a difficult act to follow. Um, so what I want to talk about a little bit is just to give you a bit more information about the PhD projects. Um, so it was already mentioned that as part of this first year in Hull that you will select a PhD topic, and it's essential that you make the right choice there. And what distinguishes the Aura CDT from a lot of other CDTs and also PhD positions around the, the country and around the world is you don't make that decision about your PhD topic at the point you join us. You have this period where you learn about all the different aspects of offshore wind and understand more about how your background and skills relate to those different areas before you actually select your PhD topic. And I think that's a really you know, nice and exciting element of the program that you make a more informed decision about what you want to do for the remaining three years of the program. And the way that that works is we ask all of our partner institutions, all the academics across the partner institutions, to propose projects, which you will then consider. You can then start a conversation with the academics of the projects that you're interested in by pitching events um, and other activities. But there's also an opportunity for you to co-develop a project as well, if there's an area that you're particularly interested in that really drives you. And so what I want to do now is just to give you a flavor of some of the PhD projects that we currently have um, going. Oh, we just skipped through a few of them there, but we'll have a look at the first one here by, that's been done by Niall. So Niall is a student that joined us in the first cohort, and his project's all about understanding the process of sediment transport on the seafloor and the process of scour on the seafloor, because this can have a critical um, impact on the infrastructure that's interacting with the seabed. So it has an implication for the foundations that are supporting the wind turbine, but maybe also something you hadn't perhaps considered as much is interaction with the cables that need to be laid to join these wind turbines back to our electricity generation network. And depending on the movement of sediment, you could cause um, a cable to be exposed or to be more buried, etc. And so Niall's going to be developing novel sensor systems, hydrophone-based sensor systems to try and detect movements in sediments on the seafloor and then understand how the sediment movement can impact on current and future offshore wind sites. So that's just one project, but if we move on to the, the next project, which has been undertaken by Rachel, another you know, issue facing wind and offshore wind is the fact that the wind doesn't always blow, always blow, okay? And depending on who you listen to, um, this means wind is useless. No, I'm certainly not in that camp, okay? But it is a bit of an issue that we need to balance the difference between what we're generating in offshore wind turbines and what we need in the grid and the demands we have in the grid. And you've maybe heard a lot about battery storage ideas, battery storage technologies, etc. Well, Rachel's project is all about looking at the feasibility of having short-term and longer-term um, energy storage systems built into the wind turbine platforms themselves, particularly thinking about the future in floating offshore wind. And this project is happening at, at Sheffield um, University. And it's, I think, a really, you know, a really interesting and, and new look at this, trying to balance the, the load here compared to what we're generating in offshore wind compared to what we need at any given time. And I should have said before that Niall's project is based at, at Durham University, so the first project we looked at. And then the final project I'd just like to touch on, which is Oliver's project, um, this is an industry, a far more industry aligned project. So this has got very close involvement with Siemens Gamesa and also the University of Hull and also the University of, of Sheffield as well. So this is a real collaboration across three different partners there. 
And Oliver's project is all about understanding um, the blade manufacture process, particularly related to the resin as it moves through the composite matrix. So wind turbine blades are a composite material, and um, as part of that process, um, resin needs to um, flow effectively to, to construct this kind of monolithic type structure that you end up with in the end. And the problem is, though, in certain scenarios, certain geometries, certain manufacturing processes, we introduce defects, which need to be as, as eliminated as much as possible, understood and controlled. And so Oliver's project is all about using uh, modeling techniques to understand the uh, manufacturing process and to be able to understand why these defects form and link that to what's really being observed when blades are physically being manufactured as well. And trying to provide more guidance on ways to avoid these defects happening in the first place. So hopefully that just gives you an idea of the sorts of diverse projects that you could be doing there. So we've touched on you know, sediment transport, we've touched on blade manufacture and alternative um, you know, energy storage methods as well. And that's just three. And there are loads of other um, projects that uh, are currently ongoing. And you can find out more about those on the Aura CDT web pages. And that's it from me. I'll hand back over. Thanks, Will. So lots of exciting research that's being done at um, the Aura CDT, and they're all uh, relevant to the sector challenges, uh, the contemporary sector challenges at that, because um, they're in line with the themes that are set with our industry partners. So I believe what we were at the point of hearing from some of our students about the journey of being an the Aura CDT is a PhD training program in offshore wind and the environment, when you will not only become a subject expert in your particular discipline, but also get a broad education across all aspects that are relevant to modern offshore wind farms. Hull is in the centre of the Humber Estuary, and the Humber Estuary is an absolute epicentre for all things uh, renewables. It is um, known as the Energy Estuary. This means for you studying at the University of Hull, you'll also get the opportunity to really get out and see what this looks like on the ground. There is no better place to research offshore wind than Hull. It's right in the center of offshore wind sector with numerous wind farms located just off the coast and very strong connections with sector leading industry, such as manufacturers Siemens Gamesa Renewable Energy, who have their blade factory right here in Hull, or Orsted, who operate the wind turbines from their facility just across the estuary. Being within the Energy and Environment Institute has also been really great. Uh, being constantly surrounded by so many postgraduate researchers and lecturers with such a broad knowledge base and a wide variety of fields. I look forward to completing my PhD and to having a career within the research industry and helping towards a more sustainable future. We have been able to work with Siemens Gamesa graduate apprentices. Um, they were in some of our lectures in our first semester. So working with them means that they were able to give us the practical application and we could kind of give a little bit more of the theory, um, which together balanced well and we were able to work very nicely together. Um, we've also been able to pitch our PhD topics to industry um, and kind of tell them how we're going to be helping them and they can then input in how they might be able to help us, whether it's um, through data that they have or any facilities that they may be able to give us to make our PhDs better and enhance the research that we are doing. The demand um, for renewable power generation in the future will only continue to grow and for you that means that the career prospects in this industry are always going to be in demand. All of these different aspects come together to be able to make this happen and you could be one of those people. Fantastic. So, you've heard about our Aura CDT program now, and um, what you've heard about is that we welcome a broad range of disciplines and uh, diversity within the cohorts, and we value that. It's extremely important and very important to the, the success of the program and your experience within the program. Um, you've heard about our teaching program and the type of research that we're involved in and how that is developed with um, our industry partners and the students uh, you can access um, and contact the, the, the industry partners. 
um, throughout the program and develop those networks that they will use going forward. And um, you've heard about how the students learning throughout the whole program is about the contemporary issues and how we can we evolve that program um, through their journey. And you've also heard about that if you are serious about pursuing a career in offshore wind sector, the Aura CDT is the ideal place to start that journey. Or, or if you're already on that journey, it's the ideal place to advance your career. So I think that brings us towards the end of our webinar presentation. Um, and at this point, um, if you've got any questions, um, as I said, we will now um, take the opportunity to answer some of those. So I'm just having a look at the chat now. Um, we've got some questions coming in from the audience, which I would invite the panel to, to help me answer some of those um, if, if I could. Um, we've got the first question coming in about um, what is the potential for um, the students to, oh, question's gone, um, to engage with our industry partners um, and, and have some um, real tangible experience um, in industry. And to answer that question, I think I will ask Jim, who is our industry lead for the CDT, please. Thanks, Danielle. So um, interaction with industries comes on, on lots of different levels. Um, so as, uh, as Jordan mentioned previously in, in the uh, postgraduate diploma stage, uh, the, the CDT students were working alongside uh, master's level apprentices within the organisation and getting a, an experience of the day-to-day -day operation of, of a, an industry partner. Um, but we also had guest speakers. So uh, as part of that programme, we had, for instance, the, the, the UK CEO of Siemens Gamesa presenting to the students, talking about what you know, the future of the industry, how it's developing, what are the key challenges. Um, Obviously, this year has been difficult in terms of visits, but normally we would aim to visit some of the facilities uh, within the region and, and see how those operate. Um, so, so lots of, of kind of interaction in, in the postgraduate diploma stage. Obviously, if you're doing a project, then then you would be spending time with the company, you know, having pretty regular interactions with um, so either in the UK or, or elsewhere. So that, that was a bit of a background noise. Um, and then, you know, because it's a cohort experience, so you, you're sharing experiences from other students. So even if you're not working on an industry based project, you will get the benefit of understanding how the industry is working through the other students who are working on, on industry based projects. So close interaction, uh, we, we, we have a very uh, effective steering group who's made up of, of real leading industry experts. Um, who help guide the program as well. So the whole the whole thing is based in what industry is looking for, and and also what they can get from it. That you know they don't do it out of the goodness of their hearts. They see the benefits of developing the skills and, and experiences of, it, of a, a, a strong cohort of, of people to work in the sector. Yeah, if I could just touch on that, I think um, it's really important to highlight that um, the, the skills that we provide the students to access during the training program it is driven by the gaps that that exist within the sector and that that they need um to grow that skill base going forward what we want to do as part of the cdt is develop future leaders in the sector so um we need to engage with our industry partners to be able to to guide that um, so it's important that we interact closely with them um, just moving on to the next question, um, someone has asked, uh, what is the difference between the core PhDs and the industry PhD programme? Um, I can probably touch on that a little bit myself, um, in that it doesn't matter if you are an industry funded, co-funded student or a, a core funded student through the EPSRC, the students go through the same program um, in parallel, part of the same cohort. The only difference is that um, the industry students are recruited directly onto a, a project right from the very beginning. But that does not mean that they don't have any say in the project. Um, once they join the program, they participate in a conversation with their industry partner um, that's sponsoring to then further develop the program as, as the student um, needs, because it is the student's project. Um, after all, regardless of where the funding is coming from. So they, they do have um, some co-development access to, to the 
project. Um, so essentially, it's exactly the same. You start in the September, you go through the same PG dip year. It's just that you know um, what project you're starting on. And that means I need to ask another question. Um, looking at the list, gosh, there's lots of questions coming in. Oh, someone has asked, what skills are we looking for in a successful applicant? And I think this is a bit of a tricky one because um, I guess it depends on um, a if you're if you're looking for an industry scholarship or if you're going directly onto the core. Um, some of those skills will be a little bit different, but I could I ask some of my partners um, to to answer that? Uh, will I mean, do you I like to answer? Uh, yeah, sure. I can give some of my views on this. Um, I mean, I think we're looking for people that are going to be successful at doing a PhD. It's difficult to be a little bit more specific than that because it's such a diverse group of, of students. You know, we're recruiting, uh, well, with us today, we've got uh, two marine biologists and then I've, I've been talking about engineering projects. We're recruiting mathematicians, people interested in, in data um, analysis, etc. So we, we're just looking for that potential to be successful to complete a PhD. And as part of that, I think you need to realize it's gonna be a lot of hard work. Uh, you need to um, be able to demonstrate that you're really enthused and interested in renewable energy and offshore wind as well. We wanna recruit students that are really enthused in this because if you're not enthusiastic about the area of doing your PhD in, it's unlikely to lead to a successful PhD. In my experience, you know, you're committing yourself to four years of becoming a you know, world expert in a particular area. So you need to be really interested in it, but also have determination and be willing to work hard. And those are the sorts of things we're looking for, as well as obviously the academic requirements that we need that you've demonstrated through your previous courses and, and studies. So that's kind of my take on it. Uh, I know that's not very really specific. I don't know if anyone else wants to, to add on to that. Nikos, Jim, did you have anything you wanted to add? I, I think I think we, we, we'll, it, it was uh, it was perfect. I think wh what you need is um, really have the enthusiasm and the strength um, uh, to do a PhD. You know, life is short, and PhD takes some time of this life. So um, that's all that's all you need. Uh, the skills can vary. Uh, there are so many themes. So if you're interested to do a, a something in data analysis. We will not look into deep skills in marine biology, for example, and vice versa. If you want to do something in hardcore maths in offshore wind, we would not look in uh, in uh, material sciences or chemical engineering. So it, it varies. I think I think the only thing you need to keep in mind that I want to do a PhD in offshore wind. I guess it's probably useful then to explain how the recruitment process works. And so we, what we do is we open up the applications for people to apply that are interested in doing a PhD in offshore wind energy. Um, then what we do is once we've, we've sifted through those applications and identified um, students for interview, or applicants for interview, what we do is then we put them in front of a panel of people that are relevant to the research theme that they've actually applied for. So we've got six research themes, so you can select which one you want to apply for, and you can apply for more than one, um, so it's not that you need to necessarily pigeonhole yourself into that, but what you then do is interview in front of people that will be looking for skills that are relevant to do that type of research. Um, but, but equally, um, if you've put that you're wanting to focus on big data, research theme that does not mean that you need to then stick to a project later in that theme um, if you if you find yourself in that first year where you are interested in a different area and you've got the skills to support that research project then then you're not restricted to what you applied for in the first place um jim did you have anything you wanted to add to that i, I was just going to say that, that Following on from actually from what Danielle said, you know, in the interview process, we are we're looking for relevant technical skills that are going to give you the, the, the technical background, but also important is the is the, the team working, the interpersonal skills, the communication skills, the planning skills, um, because you know as, as has been said, a PhD is a big undertaking. You want to make sure that you've planned it, uh, that you're having appropriate interaction with your colleagues and with your supervisors. So those transferable skills are also important. 
Thank you. Um, so we've got a few questions now coming in around um, PhD selection. How do you select your project and, and what's the process around that? And if I could ask Jordan and Sophie to comment, how did you, once you're in the program and you, you, you're hearing about all these different types of research, how do you pick a project? And how did you pick a project? Sophie? Me? Yeah, I'll go. Um, so going from a marine biology background, um, obviously I had the, uh, I saw a few projects that I liked um, off, straight off the bat. And um, kind of, so going through the modules in the first year, obviously you're learning more and more about the subject area and um, kind of honing in on your area of interest really. But then you do have the opportunity to also reach out to the supervisors of the projects, which I think is like a really important aspect. And um, probably the the way that I myself chose my project was I had a really big interest in the project um, at first anyway. And then having that personal contact with the supervisor in the, the CDT year before you start the PhD really helped and kind of allowed me to get on the same wavelength as them and and kind of zero in on it so I'd say yeah. Jordan did you have anything you wanted to add to that about your own experiences? Mine was very similar to Sophie um, I had a very keen interest from the start of a PhD that I was really interested in um, and again through the CDT year it continued it didn't change so um, I think that's a really important part in picking your project. It's important as well to have the CDT year because you'll learn different things and your interest might change there were things at the beginning that I was like, definitely, that's not really something I'd be interested in. And then after I'd done the CDT year, that changed because it's there are so many different things and aspects that you will learn. Um, so I think there's a wide range of options and it's, it's very exciting, really. Thanks. Um, can I ask you, Will, um, to elaborate as the, the research theme leads um, for project selection? Um, could you elaborate on the, the process by which um, a student selects their PhD project? So we've got some in questions around, can they, uh, um, can they interact with potential supervisors? How does it work? Yeah, so there's a few different, I suppose, ways that this works. I, I kind of mentioned this briefly when I was talking during the presentation, but um, we will we will be reaching out to all of our academic partners, so the four universities, and asking academics to propose research projects that are relevant to their expertise and to offshore wind. And all of those projects go through a review process. They're typically looked at by three independent academics who provide uh, a critical review to make sure that the is good alignment to the offshore wind sector, that there's novelty there, etc. And once those projects are approved, they're then put to the students to, to look through, to consider for a period of time, and then they will select um, a subset of those that they're interested in. And then what we do is we invite the academics that have proposed those projects to deliver what we kind of term a pitching event. So where they'll, they'll this year it was done of a webinar type environments, um, but previously we've done this kind of getting people actually together in a, in a sort of seminar type um, situation where they'll talk in a bit more detail about the project and answer questions, et cetera, and start that dialogue with the student. But there's also the option, and this is something we've done this year with the current second cohort, is to co-develop a project. So if you look through the projects and things, think, well, that one sounds interesting, but isn't exactly what I want to do. You can then start that dialogue with a relevant academic um, who would be your supervisor to start developing that up as a pro project. And Danielle and the team in Harlem and myself would then facilitate that and um, to help you develop that, that research proposal that you really want to do. And as I said, that that's critical, that you've got to be really invested in the project that you're going to be doing. Otherwise, it's unlikely to be a, you know, a success in the end. And you need to chat with your uh, potential supervisors because you need to have a chemistry for quite a time. Otherwise, you will go bananas. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and also, phrase, the, the final part of the program, uh, the first year of the program, is to then to get into your literature review as well. And as part of that process, you'll be meeting regularly with your you know, PhD supervisor to start that dialogue. Because, you know, it's a professional relationship you have, but you've got to be able to work with this person, as, as Nikos says. 
Yeah, and I think um, it, it is really important to, to develop that that strong relation, strong working relationship with the supervisor at the early stages, because that is when you're going to be, in many ways, the most exposed. Um, you, you don't necessarily have all the writing skills, you don't necessarily have all the knowledge, and it's important to develop that trust early on between the supervisors. So we do foster um, that that engagement between the, the two parties as early as we can. The only thing I wanted to add to um, Will's comments was that it doesn't matter if you select a project that has gone through the um, the normal route of, of project generation where the, the supervisors submit their project and is formally reviewed. Even if it's co-developed, we, we do check that the projects are viable and they're of high enough quality. So it goes through the same peer review process um, once that's been developed. So I think we've got time for ooh, maybe one more question. Um, oh, well, probably most importantly, when do applications open? And um, they, they are currently closed at the moment because we've just finished um, our very first round for cohort one, uh, cohort three round one. But we will be opening again in about two weeks time. So if you're interested um, in putting an application in, which we would love to see you, you will come and um, join the program. Um, they are opening in about two weeks time. So do keep an eye out on the website, either from the Aura CDT website or through the University of Hull postgraduate training um, pages as well. So they'll be posted there. Um, if you have any questions about the program, please do get in contact. We are very happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, do we have any other questions coming in? I'm just having a quick check in the last few minutes that we've got. Um, I think that's about it. So I would like to, at this point, as we're coming to the end of um, our session tonight, say thank you very much to our panel for presenting and telling us all about the program and why you should come and join us if you're interested in a career in offshore wind energy uh, and why you should join a CDT as, a part, as opposed to a normal PhD program that give you lots of skills that will equip you, not just within your PhD project, but also beyond um, your PhD training, which is important um, either if you're moving into the industry sector or staying in academia, that you develop that strong network with your peers at, at that stage, because they can become networks that you can access throughout your career, regardless of, of where your um, trajectory takes you. So um, I will now probably bring the session to a close. Thank you very much for joining us. And it's been a pleasure to, to present to you tonight and hopefully we will see some of you soon. Good evening. Bye everyone. Bye everyone.